So um, Mike is a cartographer in NGI, NGA's uh, Maritime Safety Office. He's a former Coast Guard and has a PhD in geography from Rutgers University, a BA and uh, Master's of Arts also in geography from Hunter College and the City University of New York. Uh, so um, Mike, I, we, we're not well acquainted, so why don't you just um, say a few things about yourself and what you hope to get from being a co-lead of this team. Sure, great, thank you. First, uh, we'll just do a quick go around in this room and I'll go ahead and talk a bit about myself. Uh, Rachel, do you wanna? Hi, I'm Rachel Bernstein, I'm at NGA Research. I'm uh, Sebastian Curcio. I'm uh, also an NGA Maritime Safety Office, and I'll be talking a little bit later. Uh, hi, I'm Jim Dunlap. I'm in NGA Research as well, and I'm a, mostly a physical chemist uh, with an environmental background. All right, so that's the NGA team for today, and I appreciate the opportunity to share a bit about my background. Really excited to join this group. Uh, I feel like it's fitting for me to tell you a little about, about my research interests. I'll keep it high level and uh, brief. Uh, I don't want to get into the weeds at this point, but I hope to kind of weave this into some of these calls as much as I can and as appropriate. So I'm an environmental geographer. I'm interested in co-developing geographic information systems with coastal stakeholders to understand coastal change impacts on local communities and to communicate the impacts with decision makers and the broader public for land use decision support. So, uh, you know, to remind everyone, the data team uh, is, is the sub-team of the environmental intelligence team, and uh, this kind of research interest that I, that I have is co-developing with users of GIS products um, is kind of the, one of the goals of this understanding is to support decision-making, which is a, a major aspect of, or, you know, a central theme of uh, the environmental uh, intelligence working group that we support. So I hope to weave that, some of that in as much as possible. Um, at Rutgers, where I did my doctorate, I collaborated with Alaska's North Slope Borough and its residents to co-produce a ge coastal risk geographic information system that was funded by the National Science Foundation. Uh, and I continue to work on publishing that research on my own time, but this is not what I do at NGA. It's not my official duties, so I have to make that very clear. At NGA, uh, my main job is to produce nautical charts, and I have uh, responsibilities in parts of the Arctic outside of the United States. In general, the Maritime Safety Office here focuses its charting efforts outside of the U.S. NOAA, NOAA handles U.S. waters. Um, so in addition to hands-on nautical charting, I am also what the agency calls a strategic engagement representative, where I, I, I currently assist with developing U.S. and international partnerships for uh, the agency's statutory safety navigation mission, of which the safety, uh, Maritime Safety Office is a part. So in this capacity, I currently assist NGA's senior authority for maritime, uh, to co-develop U.S. positions on international maritime charting issues. This is done in collaboration with NOAA, Navy, and the Department of State. So I have a, a, a lot of efforts that are related to, uh, to this group as part of my strategic, kind of broad strategic engagement uh, representative uh, um, uh, work role. Uh, Trying to weave that as much as I can into this, into this group. Uh, one example and something I hope to kind of expand on as we go forward is um, currently and have been for, for a couple of years now, uh, working with private industry and the International Hydrographic Organization on releasing global ship traffic information to the public via the IHOs or International Hydrographic Organization's web-based GIS. Um, and this is going to be leveraging space-borne automatic identification system or otherwise known as AIS data. Um, so that's kind of a, one of these, AIS, one of these cross-cutting uh, issues that kind of it's a good kind of case study for data sharing and all this kind of spatial data infrastructure that we're going to be talking about today. So as far as uh, plans and vision for supporting this group, um, I'm very much going to be in learning mode over the next couple of months, learning from Jonathan and others uh, to identify like where I can add value and uh, also support NGA's mission. So uh, NGA's Maritime Safety Office supports um, actively supports marine spatial data infrastructure development. Uh, and this is one agency effort that I hope to kind of uh, bring, bring into this group and advance it a bit. Um, and we invited NGA's, I, I would say, uh, expert, uh, subject matter expert of spatial data infrastructures, uh, Sebastian Caricio. He's a guest speaker today. So I hope that's a good way to kick off this conversation. 
And in general, I look forward to supporting this team and learning with everyone as I go. So is that, is that good, Jonathan? Yeah, and I, I think I can uh, motivate the um, guest speaker because I, I had questions about spatial data infrastructures, but um, I think we have something else in between. So um, are we, shall we briefly yeah. introduce IR pick to the team? Take most sure. Of um, I was going to let uh, the couple of others who had joined us since then introduce themselves if that's all oh, right sure. with you guys. Um, so, Kelsey, thanks for joining us. Uh, would you please introduce yourself to the group? You might be on mute, Kelsey. All right, we'll turn to Dennis. Would you like to introduce yourself? Oh, he just dropped off. Strange. Okay. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I think we can move forward with the rest of the yeah. agenda. Okay. Um, so, um, for folks who aren't familiar with um, IARPIC, I'm going to be, I have a terrible. Um, background in this. I can't uh, enlighten you much except to um, let you know my involvement for the past year or so. I've been the co-lead and uh, we're lucky now to have Mike Brady join me as co-lead of his team. And um, the, uh, the focus of the um, Arctic Data Collaboration Team is primarily focused on our um, around these performance elements that were developed for us. Um, in the previous strategic plan. And that's a five-year plan that's uh, wrapping up, I think this year or next year. So um, over the next year or so, we'll be writing some more strategic plan elements. But um, included in those is the, um, th there's one in particular for mapping that I think that uh, Mike Brady in his capacity as uh, um, working with charts for NGA can inform even though his focus is international, um, you know, very much important to um, have that expertise and uh, perspective. And my background more is in, in the typical data management realm, um, non-geospatial, even, even though I dabble in geospatial. And um, I'm, my, my scientific background is more in oceanography. So I think the two of us complement each other and, um, you know, we're always interested in engaging with the community and what your interests are, as well as these performance elements. So um, I don't think it's, it shouldn't be a, uh, you know, this team should be familiar to most of the people on the call. So I don't think I have to get into much more detail than that. Unless Mike, you want to add something about the team? Um, well, I, so I should highlight that I am a social scientist. I know there's a lot of environmental physical scientists that participate here. Uh, something that's important to me is working as close as possible with physical scientists. I do, you know, have observed in my uh, brief academic career that there tends to be kind of uh, a tendency to uh, not interact as much as, as uh, the different disciplines should. And I'm kind of, the, you know, oftentimes the crazy guy in the group, like I spend a lot of time around physical scientists. Um, and I, so I think, uh, you know, a lot of value can be added there. Something I hope to bring into this meeting is um, trying to uh, allow different perspectives to come to fore and helping structure, uh, facilitate and structure some conversations that come in the, uh, you know, uh, following these presentations. Um, just to kind of be the facilitator to, to get people to kind of reach across disciplines. That's kind of what I've been doing for many years. And I hope to kind of trickle some of that into these conversations. So look out for that. And I, I, I do, you know, early, early on in all this, uh, I am familiar with the, with the five-year plan, our five-year plan. I have reviewed, you know, uh, several years. I've been paying attention to these performance elements as a way to structure my own research and align them with national interests. Um, but in these calls, something I, I think there's areas for improvement is really trying to gravitate towards those performance elements. That's something you'll see me try to do is uh, kind of guide, not, you know, we don't, we don't want to have a narrow-minded conversation, but you want to try to gravitate as much as possible back towards those performance elements. So 
uh, the you know uh, Kelly and others have great things to report in their in their report, which I, I understand goes uh, in some form to Congress. So this is important work, and as much as we can guide that conversation towards those performance areas, uh, the more effective and uh, more accurate and more comprehensive uh, that report can be. So look out for that. Those are some things that I, I hope to try to contribute to this group. Okay, so thanks so much, Mike, and we're, we're really happy to have you on board. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for coming on board, Mike. It's a great addition. So to motivate today's uh, topic and, and presenter, um, I, in particular, don't have a geospatial background. So, um, and it, with uh, background with, uh, you know, common practices, institutions for geospatial data, and um, I saw I came across this term for spatial data infrastructure. I think it's in, in the context of FGDC and the national spatial data infrastructure. So, um, looking at those policies and um, the you know the laws that Geospatial Data Act of 2018 calls for this. And so, in the context of the marine realm and Arctic realm, um, Mike had identified um, work that is ongoing at NGA to promote a spatial data infrastructure. And this is a presentation to um, you know bring us up to speed with those, provide a high level overview, and hopefully, so at the end of this, I'll know what what the heck a spatial data infrastructure is. So um, and. Uh, without further ado, I think we can go to that presentation. Great, thanks, Jonathan. So I'm going to uh, briefly introduce Sebastian here. So we can move on with the agenda. So uh, we're really lucky to have Sebastian here. He's you know he's one of the NGA's star strategic engagement representatives. He's literally traveling around the world regularly. I have no idea how he gets all this traveling done, but he's he's out there doing spatial data infrastructure development, very proactive, and many other related efforts, including in the Arctic region. Uh, so I think we're very fortunate to have pinned him down today. Uh, so thank you, Sebastian, for, for joining us. So Sebastian is a lead technical cartographic analyst in NGA's Maritime Safety Office. He is also vice chair to the International Hydrographic Organization Mar uh, Marine Spatial Data Infrastructures Working Group. He is the chair of the Arctic Regional Marine Spatial Data Infrastructures Working Group and co-chair of the Open Geospatial Consortium Marine Domain Working Group. So lots of working groups, and these are, you know, this is where you know rubber hits the road. This is where, where things uh, things happen. Practitioners meet you know theory and all that. Um, Sebastian has a BA and an MS in geography, both from the University of Delaware. And as the agenda states, he's going to share his work on NGA engagements in spatial infrastructure data development. Cool. So take right. it away. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Dr. Brady, for the intro. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. And, and thank you for having me speak today. Um, I apologize in advance. Um, Mike just had a taste of this. Uh, I'll be using a lot of acronyms, uh, which uh, I will make sure I've noted to define up front. Um, but we're all working with the government or for the government or whatever, so we should all be pretty comfortable with, with acronyms anyway. So you might feel right at home. Um, but as Dr. Brady said, I'm, I'm from the NGA Maritime Safety Office. And over the last few years, I've been leading our office's development and engagement for Marine Spatial Data Infrastructures, or MSDI. I'll refer to that a lot. Uh, in that capacity, I lead um, uh, a few working groups. Uh, so uh, within the International Hydrographic Organization, or IHO, I'll refer to that one as, as well, Open Geospatial Consortium, or OGC, uh, as well as within uh, an organized body of Arctic Hydrographic Offices known as the Arctic Regional Hydrographic Commission, or ARHC. Um, so I've also spent the last couple of years uh, as an advisor uh, on the U.S. delegation to the United Nations Committee of Experts on Global Geospatial Information Management, or UNGGIM. So all of these organizations have some working group focused on uh, MSCI development, and today I would like to briefly cover NGA's engagement uh, in this open geospatial <laughs> arena and hopefully convey to you what the MSCI community is about um, and encourage you all and the organizations uh, you all represent uh, to participate however you can. So um, with that, um, I think somebody else is controlling the slide. So if you go to the next slide, which is slide uh, three, uh, it should say, what is a spatial data infrastructure up top? Um, yep, I'm controlling it, Sebastian. So just say next great. when you're ready. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. 
Um, so there's a few definitions out there of a spatial data infrastructure or SDI. Um, but the simplest one I like to use is the base collection of technologies, policies, and institutional arrangements that facilitate the availability of and access to spatial data. You'll find very similar definitions from the UNGGIM, the IHO, the OGC, and especially uh, from our U.S. Uh, National Spatial Data Infrastructure, uh, which is led by the Federal Geographic Data Committee, or FGDC. Um, and that's the lead en entity that's legally identified in the U.S. Geospatial Data Act of uh, 2018, uh, which uh, I believe Dennis was speaking a little bit about uh, earlier. So uh, next slide, please. Now, um, a marine SDI is the same exact idea, but it's focused on the marine input to an SDI. Um, so now the goals of this infrastructure are to promote the discoverability accessibility, interoperability, and reusability of marine geospatial data and information. So ultimately, MSDI is trying to get a broader use uh, of marine data uh, among all sectors of society. Not every user um, needs specifically safer navigation data, products, and services, uh, but more people can benefit uh, from the base data used to make those products and services. Um, and if uh, you just click next, please, it'll highlight just a few words there. Um, so these are kind of those four components that I'd like you to, to keep in mind. And then if you click next again, uh, it should bring you to slide five. We can basically organize um, the spatial data infrastructure into four pillars. And I have a few example bodies in each here. So starting with policy and governance uh, in the top left corner, um, being the most challenging component, arguably, uh, which dictates the controls an international organization or government may require on data. Next, we have standards, which emphasizes the unlocking of uh, geospatial data, preferably using open or non-proprietary or widely used standards, um, such as those from IHO or OGC, uh, as I have an example here. And then uh, we have information systems and technology, which encompasses the hardware, software, and the system components. Um, and ultimately, the data and the metadata itself, um, comprising the content and the information to be made accessible and usable by the MSDI. So my office, as well as NOAA's Office uh, of Coast Survey, are two example providers of hydrographic data. And I should mention that both of our offices are sourcing data and information from their partners, uh, U.S. Navy, U.S. Coast Guard, Army Corps of Engineers, um, NGA, NOAA, and the other military branches and agencies that I just mentioned um, are in close coordination for everything surrounding uh, safety of navigation and hydrographic data in the U.S. and around the globe. Uh, additionally, the NGA Maritime Safety Office fulfills international obligations in order to support safe navigation. Uh, for those reasons and more is why uh, we operate in the open along with our, our partners regarding developments in uh, marine and maritime geospatial domains. Uh, last thing I'd like to mention about this MSDI graphic uh, on this slide is uh, the organization, organiz excuse me, the organizing of these four pillars uh, in particular is uh, the IHO focus. You might see this organized a bit differently between organizations. Uh, for instance, the UNGGIM has nine strategic pathways, but all organizations will capture the same concept represented by these pillars in one way or another. So you'll see this repeated quite a bit. Uh, if you go to the next slide, it should be slide six, about data governance. Um, good data governance is what we see as the necessity to ultimately get your content available and accessible through a SDI. Uh, basically, this shows a solid data governance model should cover everything from data quality all the way through to the ultimate access. And if you click, um, there might be a little arrow that shows up saying um, that it's accounting for user needs usage analytics, and their feedback to improve the governance model um, as, as you continue to use it. Um, all right, next slide. So this slide talks a little bit about data centric production and MSDI. So to touch on data centric, centricity from our office's perspective, hydrographic offices are retaining so much data, but only about 5% uh, make it onto a finished chart product. Their centralized data stores are allowing easier product generation uh, but that raw data could be used to support other activities in the marine domain and society. So there's so
so much value in the base data um, and so much potential, potential for its use um, that we can really have a bigger effect if we can get that, that greater access. All right, next slide, please. So this is slide eight. Um, the reason why any of this is relevant to hydrographic offices is that it ultimately elevates our data to the level of visibility um, being nationally, uh, sorry, do I have the wrong? Seven, I think. Slide seven, maybe? Okay. As, as long as it says MSDI importance to a hydrographic office, is that correct? Yeah, yeah that's slide eight. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Um, so I think a lot of us, um, you know, when we're talking about geospatial data and, and um, uh, we might be in a similar position when we're talking to people and we tell them about what kind of work we do, um, uh, you know, the response is usually from those people like, okay, cool. So you do like Google Maps type things and, and all of that. Um, which uh, which always kind of gets me thinking that the majority of people out there are mostly thinking about roads and GPS navigation when they're thinking of geospatial data. So in the collective maritime domain, um, all hydrographic offices are in a situation where they're trying to get buy-in from potential stakeholders uh, that think in a very similar way. I think few people on the street kind of realize that, you know, 90% of trade happens on the world's oceans, and we're trying to get support for that and other activities um, by charting across 70% of the world's surface, essentially. Um, so an MSDI approach helps to increase the role of marine and maritime data providers to support broader objectives and a broader user base, which in turn supports the data provider's mission. Okay, next slide. So uh, this little graphic is just trying to show a mind map of connected intergovernmental organizations and subgroups that are all working towards MSDI that NGA is also engaged with. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, um, I currently vice chair of the IHO MSDI working group, um, which I'll discuss a little bit more in another slide. Um, I lead the Arctic Regional MSDI working group under the Arctic Regional Hydrographic Commission um, and co-chairing uh, that OGC Marine Domain working group along with three co-chairs from industry and government. Um, additionally, uh, two of my colleagues in the Maritime Safety Office, Jim Rogers and Caitlin Johnson, are respectively the president of the Mesoamerican Caribbean MSDI Working Group, or the MAMISDWIG, as they call it. And also, um, Caitlin's the uh, U.S. advisor in the, this one's going to be really long, the UNGGIM's Working Group for Marine Geospatial Information, or uh, as it's simply referred to, the UNGGIM WGMGI. So, um, another long acronym, uh, but uh, but it seems to be, you know, the um, greater the work that's that's going on, the sometimes the longer the acronym, or vice versa. I don't know, it could go either way. But anyway, um, Noah is also um, a co-chair of that group. Um, so uh, kind of throughout, wherever I have NGA highlighted, you can almost expect that Noah is there uh, as well. Um, and, uh, and we're kind of working uh, this, all of this MSDI uh, together. So. While I'm on the slide, I would just like to point out that the uh, OGC Marine Domain Working Group, or the Marines WIG, um, is open to anyone with interest in uh, marine geospatial data community. So that's great news to everybody here, because you all can join if uh, you would like to uh, after this. You can always reach out to me, and I can get you in contact and, and uh, uh, get you access to um, the information that we're sharing uh, and looking at. So if you go to the next slide, which will be um, titled IHO, MSDI, and Regional Hydrographic Commissions. Uh, in IHO, the MSDI Working Group, or MSDI WG, is the high-level group in IHO that monitors national, regional, and international SDI activities. It promotes IHO and other open standards and liaises with other relevant working groups, um, such as the OGC Marine Domain Working Group and also the UNGGIM, WGMGI. Um, and uh, they also develop uh, MSDI capacity building and training, uh, too. So IHO has also uh, encouraged the arranging of regional hydrographic commissions, or RHCs, um, several of which have formally uh, established MSDI working groups to deal with the hydrographic content for an entire multinational region. Um, so very relevant to our group here, IARVIC, um, an example of this. Is, is happening here in the Arctic. So if you go to the next slide, um, in 
entitled ARHC Arms DWIG and Arctic SDI. So for those of you unfamiliar, the Arctic SDI is a cooperation of the national land mapping agencies of the same eight Arctic nations that are in the Arctic Council. And just as a caveat, Arctic SDI is not part of the Arctic Council, but it aligns its leadership um, yearly with that of the Arctic Council as the Arctic Council leadership changes. Um, so on the marine side, the Arctic Regional Hydrographic Commission uh, has the Arctic Regional MSDI Working Group, or arms DWIG, which is the group I currently lead, and we are working together with Arctic SDI to provide the respective terrestrial and marine uh, foundations in an Arctic Regional Spatial Data Infrastructure. So regarding the Arctic Council um, a bit and kind of where we interface with them, so Arctic SDI um, interfaces with the Conservation of Arctic Flora and Fauna, or the CAF Working Group, um, so they have a contact um, established with them. And then um, the ARHC um, interfaces with the Protection of the Arctic Marine Environment, or the PAME Working Group within the Arctic Council. And so uh, both of our groups align and reference each other whenever uh, we talk to those uh, two different working groups under the Arctic Council, so that way they understand that we're both working towards a common thing, which is an Arctic regional um, spatial data infrastructure. Um, if you go to the next slide, this is basically a conceptualization um, of our future collaboration structure. Um, we're working towards this kind of system of systems approach uh, where we're re reusing data content across the marine domain that already exists um, and bring them together in a common infrastructure along with all the Arctic terrestrial data services um, that are provided or facilitated by the Arctic SDI. So this is basically just illustrating, uh, uh, you know, on the marine side over there where you have the ARHC, um, our working group, and then also the, the various other working groups we have within there and the um, uh, different marine networks that we're connected to uh, through IHO, um, OGC, and a number of other um, types of uh, of organizations. Uh, next slide, please. So here's a, a real example of, of what we're talking about. This is a screenshot of the Arctic SDI geoportal, uh, pulling in and reusing a, a digital gazetteer uh, service or digital dictionary uh, created and maintained by the JEBCO, General Bathymetric Chart of the Arctic Oceans Subcommittee on Undersea Feature Names. Uh, another thing that you can see here in the screenshot is also um, a base map of the what's called the IBCAL or the International Bathymetric Chart of the Arctic Ocean, um, and uh, that was something that we also helped facilitate uh, to um, bring in as as kind of that foundational base map within uh, Arctic SDI's geo portal. Uh, if you go to the next slide. Just another practical example of, of what we're talking about uh, with interoperability and reusability. So this is a screenshot of Canadian ice frequency data hosted in Canada, viewed in a Norwegian tool, and all of this happened while we were in a meeting room in Finland, uh, just within seconds of connecting. And all of that is made possible by OGC web service standards and the interoperability between the systems behind the scenes. But the user doesn't actually care about that stuff. They just want to view and use the data for their practical purposes. Um, so this example might not uh, seem impressive on the surface because people just expect data and they expect it to show up uh, nowadays. But when you understand all that goes into making it possible and to be able to do this ac across the globe, it's kind of a powerful example of, of what you can accomplish by standardizing and, and, uh, and making systems interoperate. Um, Again, this happens because of the people and the policies, the technologies, the standards, and the data that make up that SDI. It would not be, be possible without um, any one of those components missing uh, from the spatial data infrastructure. Um, go to the next slide. So this slide just talks about a, a major initiative called the OGC IHO uh, MSDI Concept Development Study. Um, and this was conceptualized back in, in 2017 where uh, IHO member states uh, and OGC Marine Domain Working Group members discussed creating a joint IHO OGC study uh, that could establish the framework for future development of MSDI. 
Um, so we wanted to explore uh, some more future activities and look for opportunities related to uh, integration of new and diverse uh, data sources and capabilities um, like some of the, uh, the few that I have listed here uh, on this slide. Uh, next slide, please. So in the summer of uh, 2018, we formally uh, started the MSDI concept development study, or MSDI CDS, as I'll refer to it. Um, NGA supported this on behalf of the International Hydrographic Organization and its MSDI-focused working uh, groups and work programs. And we progressed uh, to the MSDI CDS workshop in October 2018, and this was hosted by the U.S. Committee on the Marine Transportation System. Um, and that workshop helped us shape the request for information, or RFI, uh, in February 2018 that got sent out broadly to the international marine community. And those responses were then gathered to help build the final technical report, which was ultimately reviewed by an expert roundtable in March of 2019, and finally drafted into the engineering report as it's published today, that, that was back in August 2019, which had information provided from 40 global participants from uh, academic research, industry, and governmental sectors. Um, so if you're interested in this, I encourage you to go to uh, OGC's website and read through the Marine SDI engineering report. Uh, it's maybe a little lengthy uh, about, at about 90 pages, but you could probably knock it out over a weekend or so. <laughs> and uh, um, But we can absolutely share this report um, uh, with IARPIC uh, for sure. You know, we can either provide the link or the, or the document itself. Um, if, uh, if we wanted to share that on, on the website or, or post that. Um, but if, uh, if you're looking for it in the meantime, uh, literally just go to OGC's website, type in Marine or Marine SDI, and this will, this will show up. And if we go to the next slide, this will be kind of the, my final slide here, the key takeaway. Um, when I give these sort of briefs about MSDI, I basically ask the audience that whenever they hear about marine or maritime data, or if you're thinking about just data, spatial data in general, um, and you're talking about anything that has to do with the accessibility, discoverability, interoperability, or reusability, um, to really be thinking about MSDI or spatial data infrastructure. Um, so hopefully that raises a little bit of awareness uh, about what NGA is doing uh, in the international and open space. And if you have any interest in any of these groups or any of these activities um, and want to know more about, uh, you know, ways you can participate in this type of development, um, you know, the message here is, is that we totally welcome your participation and partnership in this space. And, and I certainly welcome you to reach out to me and get in contact with me um, if this is of interest to you. So uh, with that, I'll, I'll conclude and, uh, and open it up to, I guess, to the roundtable. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you, much, Sebastian. For sure. So, um, Jonathan? Yeah, so. If we're going at the roundtable. Uh, do we want to open with questions or frame the discussion? Uh, I'm inclined. We have a short list of people on the phone, so I think giving them an opportunity to voice any immediate questions is, it might be a good way to get started. We do have 20 minutes ish. Do we, how are we doing on time there, Billy? Yeah, plenty of time. Uh, yeah, I think we've got plenty of time. I see a few things left on the agenda, but I think the discussion here is important. Do you want to yeah. start with the phone? Just any, any burning questions and then maybe get into framing some of the discussion in terms of uh, this particular group and performance areas? Okay. Yeah, so any questions on the line? Um, hi, this is Ruth. I have a, a question related to, um, you know, you talked about data and and um, and the need to have organizations working together to, you know, make the infrastructure work. Um, and my question is really about <clears throat> technologies and things of that sort. Uh, and the reason why I'm asking is that there seems to be this push towards using schema.org to advertise data and that sort of thing. And I was wondering if uh, any of these groups are concerned or interested in that. Yeah, um, so that, 
That's a pretty good question. So when we're, we're talking about um, mostly the data providers that, that I'm dealing with are, um, are mostly uh, government um, at, and uh, and a lot of times, you know, they're providing kind of this authoritative uh, hydrographic data, uh, you know, base data set or foundational data set. And, um, and so uh, the thing that, that has, I think, been a challenge uh, always is um, everybody trying to find data and, and where to get it. And so that's where, um, you know, uh, open type catalogs of uh, information um, come in handy. And so there's, you know, been attempts at, at the national levels to try and establish these types of data catalogs um, and do all that in order to kind of make that, that data discoverable um, and discoverable by other systems as well. Um, I, I personally haven't actually um, uh, looked into schema.org or, or anything along those lines. So I'd, I'd certainly be, you know, interested in, in learning more about that. Um, if, if that's kind of, uh, a more sort of broad user way to um, find the data sets that, that they're looking for. Um, I think, you know, usually when you have um, the countries, they, they you know, want to maintain that kind of control of, uh, of everything in terms of, uh, you know, the hosting of the data to the discovery of the data. But sometimes that's not the best way to actually find the data, right? Um, so uh, I think it's, it's certainly worth, um, you know, partnering with, uh, either more, you know, open type projects or um, or other other areas um, that are a little bit more sort of in the yeah kind of open source or you know uh, somewhat commercial um, sector to kind of get things a little bit more discoverable and get really a, a good technology base to to um, to catalog and, and help find that information. Okay, so perhaps at some point um, we could talk about that because I think that's part of performance element 9.4.2. Thank you. <laughs> um, and I also note that it's very timely right at the moment since there's a lot of activity uh, both Arctic and uh, global and earth sciences in specific um, to make that um, uh, a goal with good requirements, et cetera. So. I, I have a question um, for the presenter, maybe for Mike. Um, so the marine spatial data infrastructure, uh, with uh, when I'm thinking, I put my BOEM hat on, um, I'm thinking about the interaction with our mission. And um, we don't do very much in terms of uh, transportation, navigation, um, you know, we're more in a planning mode. Uh, but one thing I saw in MSDI, I actually looked at that uh, report, technical report beforehand, and it said something to the effect that, you know, we're interested or this information, this uh, spatial data infrastructure can help um, assess or analyze natural resources. So maybe fishermen uh, are interested in fish um, you know, in our, our context, we're interested in the impacts from oil and gas development or renewable energy in the OCS. So um, can you speak to that more uh, natural resource side of things and how that's um, either used, the, they, how those stakeholders use the MSDI or how the MSDI specifically geared to support that user group? Sure. Um, so uh, you mentioned you're from BOEM, um, and uh, uh, something I'd like to highlight uh, from there is uh, marinecadaster.gov. Um, I think that's that's actually a, a really great example of, of um, sort of a, a group of a, a number of different entities that are contributing information and making it discoverable and findable, and it's and it's going, uh, I guess, a little bit. Um, you know, more kind of out of just the sole charting type uh, area and more into kind of things regarding like marine spatial planning and um, and a few other uh, types of uh, themes of, of data. And so, um, so I, that's definitely a focus on kind of the IHO side, um, you know, because 
we're primarily geared towards uh, charting. Uh, we also have a lot of other people that show up to the table um, during the MSDI working group that, that are trying to, um, you know, look at this from sort of a resource management side, um, and uh, especially when it comes down to marine spatial planning. So actually one of the things that, um, that happened recently within IHO is that the MSDI working group was specifically supposed to restructure itself to look at um, marine spatial planning um, within their, their terms of reference. So, so there's definitely going to be um, a lot more focus on that um, and, you know, uh, and along those lines with um, natural resource um, and, and the management of those resources as well. Um, so uh, you mentioned kind of the stakeholders and the people that use um, that type of information. Um, that's, that's the thing that I would, um, if I kind of speak sort of on behalf of, of all the other uh, uh, participants within the um, MSDI working group, that's, that's been the hardest thing for um, everybody to try and figure out is, um, is what, what is it that people actually want to give. We create these authoritative data sources and we try and put them out there and we try and put them out there in a format that we've got some feedback on, but, but it's very difficult to try and get um, a nice collective uh, voice of, of that feedback. So that's why we run some of these, um, these projects to try and capture that, like the, the MSCI concepts development study that I was um, uh, talking about, and then um, and try and also go further um, uh, with that and try and demo and, and get users in there to actually kind of uh, start showing us, you know, what it is that they're trying to find and what they're trying to look for. Um, and uh, I mean, I guess when you have a broad user base, it's hard to get, you know, that very um, unified answer about what that is that, that they need. Um, but, but certainly, you know, if, if marine, um, you know, natural resources, uh, I guess, you know, both marine, terrestrial, wherever, um, is somewhat more of a, uh, a need that needs to uh, be addressed. Um, we're trying to do that a little bit on the marine side. And then, um, and I think also if you look into Arctic spatial data infrastructure in particular, um, you know, because uh, USGS would be their uh, U.S. Uh, representative, uh, they're looking to try and provide that that information as well, um, especially when they're looking at um, uh, Arctic Council um, working groups like CAF and PAME, who are very much concerned about the natural resources uh, uh, part of, um, or, you know, picture, I guess, within uh, access for, for furthering their um, uh, working group goals and objectives. Right, and, and for the Arctic, um, at least the Arctic component, the Arctic is such a, a challenging research environment that these operational considerations, like, uh, you know, on, on being able to navigate safely, do impact the science so much. And so that's been a, a common theme we've heard throughout uh, from, this, from this group over the last few meetings is, um, you know, to some of the efforts that um, the the Arctic um, help me out, um, Bill Manley. Are you part of that group, the Ad Adiwig? Alaska Data Integration Working Group. I'm I'm not, but my colleague Allison Gaylord is. Right. Thank you for the name, at least. Sure. Adiwig is focused on that operational aspect, and they're sharing like project information and so on try to leverage the, the assets that are going out in the water or into you know, different parts of the Arctic. So I think they're, they're, at least for the Arctic, this is a very um, central and pivotal um, consideration for the research community. And, um, you know, as far as the, the broader marine realm uh, applicability, yeah, there's like a user relationship to um, this charting, this um, maritime information, but it's not as critical as it is in the Arctic. Yeah, and if I could just um, quickly piggyback onto that, um, uh, there was, um, I guess, the our Norwegian uh, counterparts uh, within both the Arctic Regional Hydrographic Commission and then also within the Arctic SCI. Um, they, they led a uh, user survey report uh, a couple of years back, um, and that actually went out to the Arctic Council and, and pulled those working groups about the types of information that, that they do need 
uh, with regards to national, national, excuse me, natural resources, and um, and and so we've gotten a lot of feedback from them, and and some of that is still, um, even though we, you know we have this great report and everything, it's trying to find out what are the actual data sets that will, um, you know, provide the information that they are looking for, um, you know, especially here in in, in the Arctic. Um, so so. We've taken that and used that um, to try and guide uh, the types of information that we're going to try and put out uh, in the future and, and try and find and, and hone in on, on what kind of response to uh, that need for, for the, um, you know, mapping of natural resources. So this is Mike. I just want to um, take this opportunity in this discussion to uh, make the connection to the environmental intelligence working group that we support or team that we support. Um, and I would remind people and just kind of reflect on this a bit. I'm looking at these performance elements, and I, you know, I've been on many of these calls, and I say there's a theme that there's a tendency to focus on data and models and systems. And uh, oftentimes, the you know the human, the user, uh, the social impact, those those dimensions, which are equally complicated and challenging, especially when you're talking about uh, decision support systems, they tend to get kind of overshadowed. So um, I just want to kind of put that out there as a potential uh, theme going forward to really try to emphasize user engagement, uh, co-production methods, um, and you know, areas where improvements can be made. And maybe kind of looking at these performance elements um, in terms of you know, the end state, which is really, you know, it's not data centric, that's not the end state. The end is really having the societal impact of supporting decisions. So looking at data centricity, developing the systems, developing the models as kind of a step towards supporting eventual decision influence outcomes and other types of decision support. Um, and then keeping that in mind, so involving the user into the process so we enhance usability and enhance effectiveness and, you know, uptake and all this. And this is, you know, a growing theme throughout the scientific community is, especially in the Arctic, is enhancing actionability of not only information but science, knowledge. Uh, I think this is, this is something that we can expand on. I appreciate Sebastian for coming in and, and kick-starting this conversation, and I'd like to hear that there's this kind of general shift towards engaging uh, user communities. I have a lot of, I'd love to discuss more about the results, the survey methods, the, you know, the process of, um, and what worked, what these kinds of stakeholders provided input, yeah. and like uh, ideas for proactively going out and bringing in the user community. Uh, to see this forum, this uh, IARPIC forum, as a good way to bridge, kind of get across those barriers. Meet, meet new people, mm -hmm. oftentimes still pipe happening, even, in, even with, you know, among working groups that do similar things, that's another question I would have for you, but I know we're running out of time. Is your experience? Are we? Are you? Are you? Are you working groups aligning? Right. Um, and are you know clearly there are going to be similar activities, and you know then you get into the cultural aspect of things where perceptions of you know working with the government and keeping it kind of purely scientific. These are old debates, and unfortunately, we all have to work together if we're going to have actionable environmental intelligence. Uh, will there be an organic flow of interaction? Speak up, uh, microphone, Tim. Yes, uh, I'm just wondering, I know we're short of time, but my main concern was, will there be an organic groundswell of synergy between these groups? Right. To, ask the, to answer the question that you asked, which is, what do they need? Right. right. Um, yeah, so, I mean so this is Ruth. I am uh, pleased and surprised to hear you guys saying this. Um, I worked with the Exchange for Local Observations and Knowledge of the Arctic for a good many years. Um, and one of the biggest issues that we always had was how does one actually um, make it feasible to have you know, communities directly represented because typically developing relationships takes a really long time and grant cycles are very short. Um, and uh, for example, there's been a lot of efforts to try and bring the uh, communities in Alaska and elsewhere around the Arctic into these kinds of uh, meetings, etc. But these things tend to be all volunteer, unless you happen to work for an agency. Um, and and uh, so bringing people to the table physically um, has been financially challenging. I think there's plenty of willing participants, but actually being able to fund them to attend has been like pulling teeth. Um, because for some reason, nobody understands that, you know, 
just general people aren't going to go, you know, spend money to go to a meeting. <sighs> you have to meet them where they're, they're at or make sure they can get to where you are having your meeting. <laughs> And I think, uh, says Mike, I think emphasizing the importance of user engagement, if you're going to have good outcomes, you have to invest in they have real capacity and get beyond looking at the data, the systems and the models and really emphasizing that uh, facilitated interaction. And I think that until we figure out the importance, I mean, in the end, societal impact depends on user engagement, we really need to flip our models and then really incentivize those uh, stakeholder user interactions. So I know we're really running out of time, Kelly. Uh, how do you want to handle this? You got three minutes. Yeah, um, so Bill has a question. Bill, if it's really quick. It's pretty quick. So um, first off, I wanted to say, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, user needs should drive technology, not the other way around. And uh, I wanted to uh, say kudos to you all for uh, your work on Green spatial data infrastructures and, and uh, SDIs in general, and and um, you know the I would totally agree that uh, you know a lot of the interoperability piece, making it data, especially geospatial data, findable, accessible, and interoperable, depends on these data and metadata um, interoperable standards underneath. And so, one question I have, if you have time, is with ASD, um, is there a process who decides which data layers are compiled and shown in ASD? Um, yeah, sorry, you're, you're referring to Arctic SDI? Is yeah, that right? Arctic SDI. Yeah, yeah um, so that's, that's a good uh, question. Um, that, that I would have to, because I'm not actually in Arctic SDI, I'm, I'm in like the, you know, the Marine group that, that works with them. Um, they, they would definitely be able to better uh, answer that. But um, from what I do know, um, you know, the, the one thing that I mentioned about the, the user survey report, um, the Norwegian user survey report that they were able uh -huh. to use to kind of address what, what types of uh, information went in there. So that, you know, that's them reaching out to the users in order to get um, an understanding of what it is that, that, that they're trying to show. Um, additionally, uh, just a couple of years back, they ran the Arctic Spatial Data Pilot, which was a um, OGC um, initiative as well. So I, I would, um, and that's where they tried to do some user engagement as well. And I think those types of initiatives are, are the things that they kind of use to try and define uh, what to actually provide. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Thank you all. We got we to gotta close that too. So John, do you want to give a, a 30 second uh, update on where, uh, next meetings? Sure. And then we're going to get okay. here. We have the next two meetings tentatively planned. Um, the next one for February will be at the end of February and focus on uh, just this very question we're talking about here at the end of the meeting about um, user engagement, uh, measuring data use. Um, and I'm going to wrap that in the context of Action 5, the federal uh, data action plan, which I've talked about in the past. Um, and so stay tuned for an invite for that. This, um, in two months, in, on March 18th, we're switching up the date. We're gonna be meeting um, jointly with the, um, is it the coastal, which, which team are we meeting with jointly? Arctic Observing Team. Arctic Observing Team, right. And um, so we'll stay tuned for the invite for that meeting, but we've got a great agenda planned. We might ask, um, Peter Pulsifer to come back for the um, Arctic Observing meeting to present some of his international work. And so um, please come back in the next couple months and thank you for attending today. Okay, thank you all, MGA uh, closing out, getting kicked out here. Uh, th thank you everyone, looking forward to future meetings.